Welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artist and Writers of Washington and its monthly author showcase. I am your host, Mark Miller. And I am his partner in this crime, Peter Stockwell. We once again have a bit of a different show today. Peter and I have been involved in production of, for about the last five years of this author showcase. And it now it looks like in March we'll be broadcasting from the BCAT studios once again. Which will thank God. That's a good thing you said that in the church. Yes, I know. Thank. We thought it would be a good time to update our viewers as to what we have done with Claw since all these lockdowns and everything, and what we're planning on doing in the future, and inform the community of upcoming events. We would also like to iterate with the cat audience our overall concept, our mission of the Kids Out Literary Artists and Writers, and what we want to do in the future. This endeavor involves all those people in the VCAT public access television audience. First, once again, we want to pay homage to one of our authors who passed last year, Donnie Lee Anderson. Um, she passed away um, last February in 2021. She was a local author, also did the bookends uh, newspaper column in our local paper. Uh, she interviewed me for my first published book, Free Range Protocol, in my science fiction series. And of course, Peter and I interviewed here um, at BCAT, oh, what was it, about three, four years ago? Yeah, it was three. Three, well, yeah. Book for writers. Donna, welcome to CLAW and the BCAT audience. Thank you. Now, Thank you for inviting me. If you could start out with and kind of tell us about how you started writing this local column about authors, because you kind of beat us, Claw, and BK. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I wrote a, I used to live in Hansville, and I wrote a column for the Hansville, it actually it was in the Kingston Community Press, called Hansville Happenings. When I moved to Palsbo, I told my editor that I was going to be moving but I could still write that column. And he said, no, I've got something else in mind for you. Would you be interested? And that's how I got to be bookends columnist. Blue Forge Press is planning a memorial presentation of her lengthy career and will keep publishing her literary works as her, as she was, as Blue Forge Press was the publisher of her works at the time of her passing. <laughs> Over the years, CLAW and BCAT have strived to present a cross-section of the arts and artists, not just published local artists. One such uh, part two interview was with film and literary producer Jennifer DeMarco and her wife and business partner Brianne from Blue Forge Group. Blue Forge Group assists CLAW distributing the artist interviews and is a publisher under Blue Forge Press of my literary works and some other members of uh, CLAW also. And if the dam don't break and the creek don't rise, the Blue Forge campus will reopen soon to artisan and creatives. The virus has placed new standards for public access and Blue Forge is working to meet them. Their campus is a site in the past for the assisting people with disabilities to be able to come out and make films, um, deal with cameras, computers, you name it, as being part of the artisan and creative community. As an example of that, one of the interviews we did was with Simon Kalkadekia of Olympia, who writes uh, children's books. His is a unique story. At age 19, he was seriously injured playing rugby in Australia and had a life-changing injury that uh, left him as a quadriplegic. So he went on to write books about a dachshund with wheels and his good friend, a uh, yellow parrot. So uh, those are called Frank and Mustard series. And he's a motivational speaker also and goes out to all of the local schools and has a, well, he has, he's gotten quite a following. Yes, he's, yes. His books are definitely successful. Peter and I also had a special show we put on in October. I begged him, bugged him enough that we, he agreed and we had one of our infamous Halloween shows, Vampires, Werewolves, Eaters, Oh My. And then 
We had authors read from their horrifying words, of course, uh, which resulted in one of our most popular broadcasts. And here's an example of it. Hello, and welcome to the Kids App Literary Artists and Writers' fifth Halloween show on Bremerton Kids App Access Television. I am one of your hosts, Peter Stockwell. We plan to have another ghoulish fun time today. Oh, I think I hear the other host, Mark Miller, approaching. Uh. <sighs> hey, I thought there was a mask mandate in some indoor facilities like here. Yes, but that doesn't look like a medical mask to me. Not wishing to rest on our laurels of having a Halloween five, we return and the return of the undead, or is it the unread? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did have Halloween five, and I think it's been broadcast. Yeah. Yes. And we also had a Christmas show. Exactly. Yeah. So and that was a lot of fun as well. And uh, now on to the past, new and future business involving claw and success. Most recently, over Late Day weekend, we, Claw, once again, were at the Blackberry Festival with a booth at the, would be the south end of the uh, waterfront uh, parkway near the ferry terminals. And uh, this event had local authors who came to um, sign books to an adoring audience. We also, in August... Adoring? Of course they're adoring. <laughs> And of course, in, the, in August, we had also been at the Kitsap County Fair um, with authors, and um, many of those adoring people came to us as well. And uh, we, we had quite a few new people come in who hadn't heard about us. We had people who were returning to pick up new books from the authors, and uh, it was great. Thanks to Rebecca Bauer's efforts. She's one of the original members of CLAW, we were able to obtain some tables at the Holiday Bazaar and Crafts Fair at the Port, Port Orchard Masonic Temple at, uh, on 1025 Sydney Avenue. It was an all-day affair on November 20th, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I believe we authors did well and plan on participating in 2022. In addition, the Port Orchard Town Center has opened its halls to various bazaars and craft shows. They, some people might have known the Town Center originally as the Port Orchard Mall or whatever you want to call it, or uh, shopping center, um, but it's under new management again, and they're trying to, once again, remind everybody um, that they're there and they're open for various organizations. One of the organizations that I want to bring up to see if anybody's interested in it is, I'll see if I'm going to mutilate this name, the Soroptimist Organization. Okay, I, I look at that and I want to mispronounce the heck out of it. Somehow I did it. And we'll be hosting such events in the near future, one of which, and I'll see if this camera can do this, Spring Days. Well, whether the camera can do it or not, I'll make sure. You okay, can Spring Days. That's and, May, right? right, it's going to be in May. It's a two day affair. Uh, you can, people that want to sell crafts, whatever, books, other things, we have application forms. If you want to contact CLAW, we can probably get you one. Or you can go down to the uh, town center itself and go to the little management office up on the second floor, and they might be able to give you some vendor applications too. Or you can contact the Seroptimus Direct, and I'm going to see if they put their phone number on here. Sharon King at kingcreations at wavecable.com. If you get a hold of her, you can also uh, see about uh, obtaining an application to uh, have a table there. We recently were at the town center and did fairly well, though we've discovered that if you get a table in the actual walkway, you do better than if you try to get a separate room. Um, you mean you get to trip the people as they exactly walk you get to trip the people as they walk by, you know, and yell at them and scream at them and gently, whatever. Of course, yeah, gently. But um, anyways, Diane Gardner was there on her, on her own, 
at one of the uh, bazaars yeah. and did quite well selling. She's selling her paintings and her books and a little bit of everything. So, uh, once again, reaching out to the public to see if they want to get a hold of this organization and participate in during the month of May. And another organization that Mark and I have been participating in is the BBQ to You in Gig Harbor. Um, the owner of yeah. the Texas Barbecue has given us a corner, and um, we go down there and spend a few days each. I was signed up for what about a week, I think. Yeah, a week in time. We go down each day for a few hours and sell to the customers that are coming in to get their Texas barbecue. <laughs> So not only do they get to eat, they get to read. And uh, it was really funny because when I was down there uh, in December, uh, I had people come in that were coming in from Port Orchard, Bremerton, oh, yeah. and Tacoma. And they came in from all kinds of places to come to Gig Harbor, specifically to come to this place. Exactly. And then we, yeah. It was really funny because one of the people that came in looked at me and said, oh my gosh, Mr. Stockwell, yeah. you're my teacher. And that happens. And so we, uh, yeah, we had a lot of, when I was there, quite a few out-of-state people, too, uh, came through there because they were visiting and discovered this, especially people from Texas, because I was, I used to live in Texas, and Texans love their barbecue. Yeah. And, but they've set up the management there, Gary, the, the owner, manager, um, he set up, I call it the book nook in the corner, and uh, Lucy Rar who's a marketing individual, helped get it set up too, along with Larry Fowler, who's also a published author with his Lincoln series. And we're going to be interviewing him again eventually on oh, yeah. BCAT. He's got that new book out about uh, Jack, uh, what was the guy's name? It was his uh, valet, Jackson. Yeah, he's going to be. Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. And um, uh, was with him at the White House, unfortunately. I think he got a small box, didn't he? What, the Valor? Mm -hmm. Oh, he might have. I know that he had the one valet that nursed Lincoln back to health, and it it caused Lincoln's change in attitude, because prior to that, he was actually thinking that after the Civil War, he was going to have to find a separate country or area to send all of the former slaves to, because he didn't think that the former slaves and and blacks in general and white society with all of its nice little racism was going to be able to exist together. And from a history point of view, we did that because this the yeah. country of Liberia showed up in Africa. Exactly. But then he changed his mind and decided yeah. to try to work towards... Well, those are good books to read. Yeah, way. to try to work towards getting a, a, a one country, once again, one country of melting pot. And unfortunately, somebody killed him. So, yes. Um, other authors, including myself, who appeared down in Lakewood, Washington, at the um, Clover Park um, Gavin Center, uh, we were at what's known as FAB, which is Film, Arts, and Books. And um, I think if I remember correctly, there were something like 15 authors that were there, along with artists. And um, Diane Gardner was there. Um, David Mecklenburg was there with his artwork. Uh, his mother was there, um, who is um, um, J.W. Capick. And um, as I said, there were quite a few authors there. And uh, David is, he just posted on our CLAW website. By the way, CLAW has a couple of Facebook pages. And um, if we can keep, by the way, public announcement here. If you're from a foreign country and you keep trying to post on our CLAW pages just to get attention, don't. You're going to get blocked. We're for people that are actually trying to do literary and artistic creations and stuff like this. We don't want all these weird little films of you running around in your bikinis or something. It's not fun. It's a pain in the posterior and then i got to try to block it. I thought they had TikTok for that. I did too. That's why I don't understand why... As soon as as soon as Facebook we did some of their parameters, all of a sudden this last weekend or so, all these weird things started popping up. So, yeah. hasn't been a lot of fun. But anyways, right. well, despite the lockdowns, many of us have created new books. Um, I'm just about to publish a new book. Yeah, hopefully in May, 
and uh, it's called Android Dawn, and I would show you the cover, put it back on the, on the green screen behind me so you can see what it looks like. And um, it is the sequel to my other book, The Mistress, which I will show you. I'll pull up a copy. That's when we pull up the copies, right? Yep. We're going to pull up all the copies. Do you want to... Okay. So you... So that was my new book, and uh, I'll film that later. Okay. And, of course, being the typical verbose person that I am, I've been pushing my books and stuff. I've got some things in the works. One of the books I did publish that's been fairly successful was my non-science fiction book about my, based on my experience as a federal agent called Jade Eyes. And this has actually been fairly popular amongst people because it's involving human trafficking. And then when I explain it, that basically what I'm trying to do is explain to them how a real federal investigation goes, not Hollywood and these shows about the FBI and NCIS and all this other stuff, that people, television has a lot of BS on it. Oh, really? And if you think that all of these agencies run around like they do on television, you're wrong. So if you want to see how something really happens, worse and all, you can get this book. Um, one thing I wanted to show is my publisher, the Blue Forge Press, does all my covers. And I think they do a pretty good job because I have the artistic ability of a rock. So, and this is what you need is to be able to do, of course, covers and be able to do a nice little back cover with the blurb on it. Blurb. Yep. And um, so. Everybody in CLAW, we attempted to we attempt to help them as much as we can by telling him telling them about our misadventures. So they don't make the same mistakes we make. And so they don't waste their time. And we have some other authors here that we're gonna be green screening their information. Um, we've got Diane Gardner and she's got some new books, Rises of Toby and Princess, Ian's Realm. Um, she's re-releasing -re that, Cassandra's Castle. Um, both Ian's Realm and Cassandra's Castle are still in the works for uh, possible uh, films. And of course, we also have Denise Racino. She just came out with Storms from a Clear Day, which is her series set here in the Northwest during World War II involving a, a Japanese spy ring. Yes, there was one here. Mm -hmm. Japanese spy rings. So, uh, she does extreme historical research to make it as realistic as possible to the point that she has recorded a lot of World War II veterans, some of them have since passed, and I'm bugging the heck out of her to go ahead and write a nonfiction book with all of those interviews in it. And hopefully once she does that, we can get her back onto uh, Claw for an interview. And then we it would be nice if she put a video together of all the interviews that she did. Too. Well, I think if she has video. Oh, that's just it. She's got hours and hours and hours and hours of video and audio. And I told her that if she doesn't do something with it, this is what always happens. We're not all young. We're not, as you can tell by the gray on our face, we're not spring chickens. So if we pass and we were writing on this big, huge nonfiction thing, what happens to all the research? Well, what could happen to it is it could get buried in some box, and 50 years from now, one of your, you know, grandchildren or great-grandchildren come along and find it and go, oh, my God, what is this, you know, as opposed to trying to set something up ahead of time. So, Denise, I'm, I mean, excuse me, not Denise, but yes. Diane, is it Denise? Yes. Denise, I call, uh, yeah. No. I keep calling her Diane. I'm sorry, Denise. Denise Frasino, if... I demand that you hurry up and get this done so we can then broadcast it to the world on our CLAW meeting. Denise, 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 Denise. Why do I keep calling her Diane? I don't know why I got to... You got Dale Fowler, you got Diane Gardner. I know, but for some Denise reason... Denise Yeah. So it's, not, so it's Denise Frasino. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And of course, like we were talking about Larry Fowler, Dale Fowler, um... Is Lincoln Books, Lincoln Raw, and The Turn, and a little known book that he doesn't like to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it anyways, The Ripples. Yeah. He wrote this kind of. I've got a copy. I know. He wrote this nice little scary little 
horror slash mystery slash thriller killer thing, you know, uh, where he, he he uses a um, a method of where you can bounce between characters, each of them explaining their view of what's going on and everything. But it's you know it's nice little kind of like a slasher book. <laughs> so yeah, so you, you might want to look that up. But for some reason, he gets all uncomfortable when we well, talk about it. I, I so we're going to talk about it anyway. Yeah, I think it's been cool. Larry, it was his first book, and I don't think he. But it's, but it's good. Yeah, but it's good. None of our first books are that. Good. Yeah. Well, I think actually he wrote it. He was writing his first Lincoln book, and for some reason he wrote. He he decided to kind of decide if I remember the story correctly, which I, he'll probably tell me I'm wrong. But then he decided to write this. It's it's kind of I don't know if you call it a cl palate cleansing or whatever. But sometimes you'll be writing in a specific genre, and you feel like, well, I just want to write something else. And then it helps you with your original genre. Don't ask me why, but that's how authors' brains work. So anyway, so we'll try to get you to buy the ripples, and he can get all embarrassed. Um, my publisher, well, i got to go find her book now, unless he can draw it up. My publisher, uh, Jennifer DeMarco, started out as a publisher years ago, very young age back in her teens and was a uh, best-selling author and stuff like that. So she finally managed to get her uh, works copyright and everything back. So she's re-releasing her and here is one of her first re-released books. And that's her on the cover. Uh, Body of Work, A Year of Stories by Jennifer DeMarco. So, and she's hopefully going to get some of her other stories. She wrote a a fairly seminal science fiction story back then and she became very irritated because the publisher at the time which one of the big name publishers which will remain nameless on the cover of the book they put a couple Caucasian females when the main character was black well that, I've seen that happen I know I had a cover that had the wrong pistol on it. Well, I know, but I needed a revolver. But what I'm saying is, they specifically did that, and they're a mainstream, huge yeah. publishing house. You think they would have? And she brought that up to them, and they were kind of like, "Well, we're the experts in marketing, so you know." And she's going, "Yeah, but that doesn't tell what the story's about." So anyway, so she finally got it back, and she'll be re-releasing. And you read Mark Allen's Blood Red Boom. Yeah, I just finished it last month. And it was, uh, you know, was, he writes horror. But I didn't, even though it's about werewolves trying to uh, change the world order, what I found was it's more like a contest between two groups of people that want to have a certain way of, of, of living. Uh, one group that wants to run the world and the other group that says, hey, look, we're trying to live in the world. And, um, yeah, leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, you get down to the final battle, and everybody's bloody. And he gets into the details of werewolves tearing apart humans, and yeah, each other, things like that. But uh, it's a it's a very good read. It's a I would recommend it uh, if you like horror. Okay, good, read it. If you don't like horror, then read it for the uh, political aspects of it. Yeah, no, because and, it's the. And he, between, between various groups. In human conflict. Yeah. <laughs> or in human conflict, depending on how you look at it. That was in human yeah. conflict, yes. Yeah. But I, I do highly recommend this book. And of course, we'll try to show here during this show maybe a few little clips from what we did last year. Yeah. Maybe. We'll throw in some more clips. Uh, you know, the last show we did when Mark and I were. Uh, doing our reprise. Yeah. Um, we showed you some clips. I'll, I'll bring you some more clips of what we've done for authors um, over the course of the last five years. And you, you authors that we've interviewed once before, this is going to reach out to all of you. Contact us again. We're going to try whoever wants to be re-interviewed after we go through a couple people that we promised and couldn't do it thanks to a certain virus that came around and locked everything down. They're going to get first choice, but anybody else who has a new project who wants to come on and be interviewed, and of course, then you have the access to your interview and you can use it for whatever means you want to. 
once it's, after it's broadcast on uh, Bremerton Kitab Access Television, please contact us, and we'll be contacting you anyways and bugging the heck out of us. So if you don't want us to contact you, just just already just send us an Instagram already go tell us to go screw or something. So anyways, um, getting down to the end finally. So Claude's working on additional events to showcase the artistic talent in Kitsap County and the surrounding area. That's why we exist. Yes, we just went through some of our books and stuff and tooted our own horn. But basically, we exist to help all writers and artists communicating with the public, all creatives, if you're a painter, writer, whatever. Yeah. Of course, without the excellent help of the PCAT Studios, our efforts would be more limited. Yeah, these endeavors could not be completed without excellent support of the people that work there. Um, give you an idea, we've got, uh, I will be over at the University Street Fair first weekend in May. We have the spring days that is being set up in the second week's weekend, the 14th and 15th of May. Um, I have been in touch with um, Summary of Sunny Events, which uh, oversees uh, the Bridge Blast, the Kitsap Food Truck Fest, or North, I guess it's called the Northwest uh, Food Truck Fest, oh, yeah. um, and also the Kitsap Fair. And then, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, um, the Blackberry Festival. And then also Cindy McKay has, um, we're in touch with her about the uh, Kitsap County Fair. So there are some events coming up. Uh, we hope to add to that. Uh, I know the Gig Harbor Arts Festival is going to be held. Um, is that June? I think it is. I think so. We're going to get a hold of Larry and find out. But we're, we're going to be a part of that. Um, we'll just see what's going on and uh, keep everybody apprised of uh, the events and where you can go see us. I do happen to have books at the Unique Local Bazaar and the Kitsap Mall. And I will be down on most weekends so that you can come down and meet me yeah. there. And, and, and we're going to be talking to now that apparently the Silverdale slash Kitsap Mall has been reorganized after some problems with its bottom line. We were, Peter and I are going to get down there and talk to them once again. We used to have uh, events down there in the mall hallway where we'd bring all the authors down and we'd sell our books. And usually they were pretty pretty successful. Yeah, the, three years ago we did October each weekend in October. Yeah. Because of authors because it um, is book month, and uh, we wanted to avoid Santa Claus. Yes, we made the, we made the mistake one year. We Claw and also Blue Forge. We went down there with Santa Claus, and the only people that showed up were people that wanted to sit on Santa Claus's lap, and they pretty much ignored the rest of us. So we're hoping. But it was fine. Yeah. It really was fine. But we're hoping that the new management slash owners slash investors will work with us so that we can start using the mall again. Correct. Correct. Um, you want to explain a little bit? He does the editing for these shows. Yeah, I have a program that, uh, and, and it's, this is kind of interesting because there are a lot of people out there making movies and films and, and short series that are going on all of these various uh, streaming platforms like uh, Netflix and Fubu and uh, Hulu and Yudu and Sudu and <laughs> whatever, and, you whatever. Know, all the different names that are out there. And uh, it's interesting because there are somewhere in the about 5,000 different sources oh, God. Of, of ways of getting things. Uh, YouTube is another one. And of course, then. The regular movies that go into the theaters that um, the Hollywood people or New York people put yeah. And the, the funny thing about it is, all of us have the equipment available to us at a very low price for being able to do what we're doing here. Mark and I are using our um, Android phones to record this, and then I take that raw data. And I chop it into little pieces, and I'll, I'll chop out the audio and put it together. And I can put it all back together just like any other yeah. movie person can do because of the software that I use from uh, Adobe. Right. But we like to use Bremerton Kitsap Access Television because they actually have a studio. Yeah. 
and they actually have everything already set up. So we don't have to run around and try to find some spot to film. And like Peter actually wound up buying a, a green, green screen. screen. So the green screen bar is. That has the bookcase. Yeah. So whatever it is. Whatever's on there, okay. Whatever's on there at the top. Yes. Hopefully nothing at too adult by accident. Are you talking about adult? Photos. Adult, adult. You, you remember that story? Mm -hmm. Did I tell you a story about B cat? Mm -hmm. Remi about the, the yeah. Nighttime. Right. Remington mm -hmm. Kids Have Access Television, and we'll kind of put a blurb in here, is a television studio and network set up for the public use. Okay. If you have an idea for a show, you can go pitch it to John Roush, who's the current manager. He's going to be retiring in the end of March, and we're going to be trying to get another new manager in there. But bottom line is, BCAT is, is supported by taxpayers' money, Bremerton, Kitsap, okay? So if you've got a little informational show or you just want to come in and spout your opinions, you can come in there and talk to them and, and put a show together. All they ask is, A, you try to make it halfway professional, B, if you say you're going to do a show once a month, then don't do one and then disappear for a year. So because they try to schedule stuff out. The story I have real quick was they had an individual who had a specific political bent. And so he would have this show basically complaining about whatever he was complaining about that week. And then behind him on the green screen thing that he had set up was a bunch of pictures of nude women. Well, Remington Kids Happy Access Television does not usually censor stuff. They, they, it's the old community standards idea of the Supreme Court decisions back in the day, and I think it was the 1970s they came up with that decision that it's all based on community standards just because one person thinks that the, was it Milo de Venus nude statue? Oh, yeah, the Venus yeah, statue. Is obscene and somebody else does. It's it's yeah, they go by community standards. Mm -hmm. Well, one day, the then man, Charlene, asked the guy, well, wait a minute, do you have copyright permission to use all these photos that you're getting out of all these adult magazines? And he said, no. And she said, congratulations, until you can get permission from the people that own the copyright of the photos, you're going to have to stop using them. Well, he disappeared. <laughs> but, once again, Bremerton Kids have access television. Open to all. For instance, the music that you hear with the program uh, is music that is free as long as I get credit to the source. And uh, you'll see that is always done in the credits so that um, I do get credit where credit is due. This broadcast interview will be scheduled for, is scheduled and will be shown in March. Um, at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Um, we will continue this into April and May and June and all the other months as well. We are always going to be shown at 6 o'clock on Saturdays on Channel 3 for Wave Cable and Channel 12 for Comcast. And if you do not have those channels because you don't uh, subscribe to cable television, then uh, go to the internet and you can call it up on bkat.org. And scroll down to the bottom where it says live broadcast or what's live now, yeah. and uh, click on that at six o'clock Pacific time. Whether it's daylight or standard, we'll figure it out yeah. later. Clog, so, yeah, it will, it will let them show up. Later. And Claw exists, like we said before, for the artists and the authors to help with marketing, distribution, and publicity. We meet every month on the first and third Wednesdays at Spiros on Kitsap Way in Bremerton, Washington, at seven o'clock. Watch for the time on Facebook and the meetup pages for um, Claw and also Kids Up Literary Artists and Writers. All are welcome. On the second Tuesday of every month, around 6.30 p.m., the affiliated Kids Up Peninsula Film Group, or filmmakers, um, meets at the Family Pancake House on Wheaton Way in Bremerton. So it's Claw affiliated and I run the little meetings. All people interested in film and all those related subjects are welcome.
Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Kids Have Literary Artists and Writers of Washington and its monthly author showcase. I am your host, Peter Stockwell, first elf on this fourth Christmas show of Claw on the Bremerton Kids App Access Television Network. I think I hear Santa Claus, that ringing bells, Father Claus in Christmas, you know, Saint Nick, uh, the person who has all the goodies and the presents and goes down the chimney. Here he is. He eats all the cookies, too. And is that Rudolph? Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry mask-free Christmas. I've had so many vaccinations, I feel like a pincushion. <laughs> I'm his partner in crime is Santa, Mark Miller, with additional help from a reindeer named Rudolph, also known as Sherry Miller. Lead, lead reindeer. Lead reindeer. My name is Mark Miller, and this is a special episode of the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers. I'm calling it the Winget episode. And over here on my left is my partner in crime, Peter Stockwell. Yeah, we're just sitting out here outside of the BCAT studios for the purposes of trying to get another recording done. We haven't been at the studio, well, since February, have we? Right. And uh, we're glad to be back. It's nice to see John again. and. All the other crew are not here, but uh, we're now sitting outside in the parking lot filming this. And as uh, Mark said, this is kind of the wing it thing. Uh, that's okay. We don't mind because, you know, the, the idea that we are authors brings about that we wing it all the time. We make up stuff. We make up all our stories. We make up all the characters, the settings. Uh, we use some places, of course, that are real, like in my case, I've used uh, Kitsap County and Snohomish County in Canada and um, my latest book which is called The Mistress, this one just came out, uh, uses the Washington DC area and um, it takes place in the future. But and it, of, is, it is winging it today. And of course as part of winging it, if you notice we're sitting at opposite end of the table, this is six feet, we're social distancing. Although. I Welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers and its monthly author showcase. I am your host, Peter Stockwell. Author Virginia Nielsen is visiting with us this month at the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television Studios. I met Virginia in December of last year at the Kitsap Mall when she was signing books near Barnes & Noble. So, welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers. We will shake hands later, but not now. Viruses and everything. So, Virginia. Welcome to the Kids Out Literary Artists and Writers of Washington in this monthly showcase, Author and Creative Showcase. I'm your host, Mark Miller. Today, I have two partners in crime, Ashley partners in CCC Entertainment Group, Aaron Carlson and Charles Lawson. They're the creators behind a beautiful independent film, The Outrider. I met them a few months ago at the Tacoma Filmmakers Meeting and began to pick their brains about the creative process. I was able to convince them to come to the CLAW hot seat at the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television Studios. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Normally we shake hands, but you'll understand why we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah, exactly. Yes, sir. So, Aaron and Charles, how did you two first meet up and start this whole filmmaking process? Girls. Girls. Really? Okay. Absolutely. Girls. That's going to be an interesting story, I know. <laughs> so you've got to continue. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. 28 years ago, um, we were both we were dating sisters. He lived close to one, and I was in high school with the other, and mm -hmm. so that's how we met. We met. The sisters, you know. Did you guys marry the sisters? Yes. Eventually. Yeah. You both married the sisters? Yeah. Yep. And then I 
got a divorce with one of the sisters. <laughs> okay. And, <you laughs> and I had married somebody else. It, oh. And then we, and we, now, we're, and we're still friends. Now Amber, that is in the movie with us, oh. is my wife, and sh we're married now, and he is on to other things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I knew. Welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers and its monthly author showcase. I am your host, Peter Stockwell. Author Bill Martin is visiting with us this month at the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television Studios. Bill contacted me about his book, which is now at Barnes & Noble, and Amy King of the bookstore gave him my name as a person to help him with promotion. Thanks a lot, Amy. <laughs> Welcome to our broadcast for Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers. Hello, nice Peter. to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be yeah. here. Thank you. Well, Bill, tell us about your background and whether you're a native of this area or have lived other places other than the Kitsap Peninsula. Well, native of the Pacific North Northwest. I was born in Prince Rupert, Canada, and my folks came down a couple of years after the war and moved into. You're a Canuck. Yeah. No. I'm a naturalized American citizen. Yeah, my father is through too. And through. My father was too. Yeah. He was uh, Canadian born up in um, um, Ontario and uh, came down when he was about three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got down here just in time to uh, make it for the 7.9 earthquake in 1949. Oh, well, that, <laughs> that was pretty good. That yeah, was a nice introduction to the yeah. Pacific Northwest. Well, I was, I don't remember. Welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers and its monthly author showcase. Hi, I'm your host, Peter Stockwell. Author Jolene Slitakova is visiting with us this month at the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television Studios. Jolene stopped by my signing event in the Kitsap Mall about a year and a half ago and bought a couple of books from me. She related she was writing her first book and I encouraged her to continue her endeavor. She contacted me about her launch party in January, and I attended. She lives in Grapeview and is beginning her new endeavor of creating stories that entertain. Welcome to our broadcast for the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers. Thank you, Peter. Nice to have you with us. It's nice to be here. So, Jolene, tell us about your background. Are you a native of this area? I know you're not, but, you know, I have to ask the question anyway. Actually, I am. <laughs> well, keep going. <laughs> Tell us all about it. I was born in Bremerton. <laughs> uh, I was born in Bremerton, yeah, a native. Uh, my dad was raised in Port Orchard. My mom was a Texan transplant, but they both attended South Kitsap High School in the 1940s. But when I was just two years old, we left Gig Harbor and moved to Arizona. And See, I, I knew you got away. <laughs> <laughs> but my feet were webbed. See, they were webbed from the I beginning. I understand that part. But in my uh, 59 years of life, I've moved 41 times. Ooh. I'm quite the gypsy. I have wanderlust deep in me, just always <laughs> looking for that next experience and adventure. Well, life does present us with a plethora of materials for our creations. And um, I'd like to know what compels you to write. Well, you're, you're not one of those ones who started early, are you? Well, I did, just not um, out for everybody. <laughs> Writing little that's stories when I was a publishing. kid. That's what we call Oh, yeah. that's right, publishing. <laughs> um, I wrote my first full-length play in sixth grade that was performed for the whole school, and, and I grew up performing, and, and so I wrote music and songs. My mom used to always ask me, she says, why do you always write sad songs? And I do have some happy songs, but I guess I tend to write based on traumas and negative things that myself and others have gone through. That kind of tends to be the motivation. That's kind of like with all... Welcome to Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers, author and creative showcase on Bremerton Kitsap Access Television. I'm your host, Mark Miller. This week, I'd like to welcome April Ladell Emerson, and I just mutilated your name again. <laughs> to the BCAT uh, studios. Mm -hmm. She's an educator and writer with a book that I'd like to examine. And with her is her artist, who did all the illustrations on her excellent book, Sydney. April, Sydney, welcome to the show. Welcome, thank How you, you Mark. Hi. Now, 
April, you and I met through CLAW meetings mm -hmm. and events, and prior to you writing your book, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> so how do you pronounce the name of your book? It's Aponanoko and the Lonely Tree. There you go. Aponanoko <laughs> and the Lonely Tree. And I know you have a flair for poetry, because we went through that already. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd kind of like to have you explain then how you wound up writing this book and give it a nice <laughs> little history of it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> in 2009, we were, uh, my husband, my then husband and I were stationed in Hawaii and um, my son and I actually went ahead of my husband mm -hmm. to Hawaii and we were in temporary housing. And I knew that the likelihood of us living in Hawaii again was very low. So I said, okay, I, we know we're here for three years. I want to get out a, every moment and experience this island and just take in all that I can. And so the, the, we got in late at night. I woke up the next morning. We were staying at a hotel at the time, and I asked the front desk clerk, I said, you know, I see this mountain out in the distance. W could I walk there? Because we didn't have a rental car. And yeah. she said, sure, you can walk there. Well, it turned out to be about seven miles, but it didn't feel like seven miles because as I was walking along on the path that she told me, I went from Waikiki, which is, you know, very touristy, yeah. and, you know, I'm from Las Vegas, so that didn't really, it didn't shock me at all, but as soon as I got outside of Waikiki, all of a sudden this world changed. I mean, things smelled different, the plants were different, the, the birds were different, the sounds, I mean, just everything about it was different, and I just felt like a little kid just absorb, absorbing all these colors and smells, and, and as I was walking along, I noticed this tree. Uh, routinely in different yards and, and some of them were growing in the wild and it was funny because it was this really ugly tree it was very craggy and at the ends of these craggy branches was this beautiful flower and I recognized the flowers the flower that they made some of the lay out of you know some of the lay that we traditionally think of when we're in Hawaii and it, it turns out to be the plumeria tree and that moment planted the seed which then took about 10 years for me to formulate the idea mm. um, into the story. And uh, d during those years, you know, as, as I'm, you know, milling, it's, the story is milling about in my head. It took all these different iterations and eventually, you know, just talking to other people, well, very few people, it was a very small group of people that knew about the story mm. with their help. Um, and I was fortunate enough in 2016, 2017, to meet my business partner, Sean Brown, mm -hmm. who was working on well he, he was already writing he had already been writing for several several years writing inspirational posts to friends and he had asked me if i'd help publish his book just a thought which is now um, there's three in that series um, he said you know would you help me and i said well i don't really know anything about publishing a book but i really believe that 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 was s instrumental in pushing me forward and taking what was in 2009 a seed of a story mm -hmm. and going oh maybe one day i'll write this book to, you know, you actually can do this. And so that pro my work with Sean propelled me forward into actually putting this book together. But you, al but you also had a little bit of a, a, a background in, I think it was marketing and business mm -hmm. prior to becoming an educator. Yes. And so you would... Welcome to the Kitsap Literary Artists and Writers and its monthly author showcase. I am your host, Peter Stockwell. Author Elena Gonzalez Blanton is visiting with us this month at the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television Studios. Elena found Kitsap literary artists and writers and joined the fun and camaraderie of our meetings and recording sessions. She lives in Bremerton and is beginning her new endeavor of creating stories and poetry that inform as well as entertain. Welcome to our broadcast for the Kitsap literary artists and writers. Thank you pleasure to have you with us. So, Elena, tell us about your background. Um, I have a big family of six children. I'm married, thank, thank goodness for that. Um, I'm actually from Texas City, Texas. I grew up there, moved here when I was about 12, and um, I went to school at Wazoo. Go Cougs. Yes, go Cougs. <laughs> Got a degree in human development. And now I'm working on my master's degree in history and government. So Excellent. lots of writing during my academic. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So you have not been living in Bremerton forever. How yeah. long have you been here? Just in Bremerton since July. My husband and children and I were living in Silverdale for about five years. Okay. But you have been in Kitsap County for since a while? Since I was 12. And that since was a 12. long time ago. Yeah, it is a long time <laughs> yeah. ago. Because yeah. I understood that you were uh, basically from this area. 
I knew you were from Texas. Yeah. You'd grown up up here. I want to say, well, I'm going to be 42, so it's it's been a few decades. A few. Well, that's okay. I've been here longer than you've been alive, so that's okay. <laughs> Very good.